I'm Atuba George, and I'm so blessed to be bringing God's truth today. Praise God. And this is a complete broadcast. And I told you, we bring the word of God to get you to that place of completeness in Him. Before we go into today's broadcast, can we make requests for our daily bread? Are you ready? You've got to be ready because I've got lots. My heart is full today. Praise God. Father, join me now as we, as we make this demand. Say, Father, I demand right now for my daily bread. I receive it right now. Lord, I ask for angelic activities where meeting my needs is concerned. And I'll never be broke today. I will never be disadvantaged today. I employ your power to walk in me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. All right. I, 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 we were somewhere yesterday, and I promise we're just going to continue today. Praise God. John chapter 15 and verse 16. Jesus talking here. You remember our same scripture? You shall receive power after the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay. So, we are, I'm showing you what that power is doing in you okay it is making you a witness of jesus so he says you have not chosen me verse 16 john 15 and verse 16 you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you i chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear fruit now take note again he used the word singular, fruit. He didn't say fruits. He said fruit. Now that's of excellence. And I've told you, what is that fruit? It is love. So let's replace uh, the word fruit to what it really is, love. See, just like you have mango tree will be a mango fruit, right? Um, orange tree will be an orange fruit. Okay, so the Bible says God is love so and then love tree will be a what love fruits see that now so now it says you did not choose me but i chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear love mm, does it make sense to you go and bear love and that your love should remain. <laughs> now, no wonder Romans tells us the love of God is shared abroad in. Now, that's the engine room. See, we are the branches. So, what is working in us? The love of God is shared abroad in our hearts as it's boiling, and, and, and then it just comes out. <laughs> it just comes out as fruit in us. Notice it says, You did not choose me. But I chose you and appointed you that you should go and bear love and that your love should remain. That whatever you ask the Father in my name, he may give it you. Mm. I don't mind me. I'm mixing King James and New King James. <laughs> Praise God. Yeah. Now, now, he says, I appointed you. And then I ordained you. I consecrated you for this purpose that you go and bear fruit which is love and then that fruit of love should remain and i touched on this earlier i think we read verse 7 of this he says love is the fruit and i said it's not about you going everywhere and the bible says yeah, we should love one another. Okay, I'm looking for who to love. First and foremost, I call you Kamushaika. <laughs> you must receive the love of God. You must come to terms with the love of God. You must come to terms of who you are. You are a child of love. God loves you. 
Oh, he loves you. Everything you see in this world was because of you. Everything. Now, you've not come to terms with that reality, but it's the truth. And I pray you grow fast in it. Because this, this, if the motivation of everything you do in life is from this standpoint, you'll be amazed at what you're going to accomplish. You'll be amazed at how you deal with condemnation. You'll be amazed at all. you just be amazed. Praise <laughs> God. So he said, I've appointed you to go and bear fruit. How do you bear fruit? You show with your life. That the love of God is in you. Everything about your life reveals the character of love. Love. Now, people will notice in your life. You say, that's what I ordained you for. So I release you. Go show forth my love. That's what he did. Go show my love. I release you for this purpose. Go show my love. And that that love should remain. Not once in a while. Uh -uh. Remains in an increasing measure. Wow, you know, man, God used to show me love before. You know, these days, I don't know. No, 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 no. You come to that place, you relax in his love. He says, this is the fruit you bear. You show the world that I am in you. I am love. And I manifest myself in you. So you show the world all these things. Everywhere you go, you, everyone looks at you and says, see, God loves you. Now, everyone looks at you, and this will be there because they, they want to find you. There is no boasting in you. Oh, ah, if, the, if not that I had my master's degree. No, no, there is no boasting in you. There, there is no, because truly you have come to the place of realization that I'm a child of love. I'm a child of love. As you go, you know, that's why the Bible said Jesus went about doing good. Now, you've got to be good before you go about doing good. He wasn't doing it for selfish reasons, just like a lot of a lot of people do these days. You know, they set out to do good. Now, they want to publicize it so that they'll get more money. Now, so the intention is they want to get some donors to donate money. Now, that's not what he's talking about. He went around. And you know, many people, Jesus healed, will tell them, don't tell anybody about it. You just go give thanksgiving to God. You just go tell your family what God has done for you. Because he wasn't doing it for public stunts or publicity stunts. He was doing it because that was who he was. He went about doing good. Now, that doing good was from the place of love. So, he lays his hands on the sick and he expects them to recover. Why? Because love is at work in him. And it is love that will make him realize that whatever I ask the Father, he will give it to me. He is not going to lay his hands on the sick to show that he has power. No, he is laying hands on the sick because... This guy is not supposed to be sick. It is wrong for you to be sick. So he lays hands on him. And then the sick person goes, Oh, I feel different. Oh, yes. That's exactly how your father wanted you to feel. So he sent me now as an expression of his love. So I've come to do what... Now, you remember, we were told, Love your neighbor as you love yourself. So self-love, and you cannot have self-love if there is no realization of self-love. Well, sometimes people say, have self-love. Like, ah, me, I love myself. And that, be, be careful that you're not doing selfish love in the name of self-love. The root of self-love is the realization 
that you are loved by the one who made you. That is the root of self-love. So you see, it's not even generated by you. Rather, you submit to it. So we submit to the love that he has for us. Thank you, Holy Spirit. That's why the Bible lets us know, even in marriage, husbands, love your wife. Wife, submit to your husband. Why? Because wives submit to love. Husbands, love. You see that? And, and I'll tell you this truth. Husbands loving your wife is not just, but you know I love you. But you know I love you. But you know I love you. No, no, no. Your wife, your wife should get to that point where she realizes that she is loved. There is just something. There is just, uh, it, it, it's not by how much money you give. There are women who receive so much money from their husband. And every time you just said, eh, he's using that to buy me. I know what he's doing. He's just using all this money to buy me. No, no problem as long as I'm enjoying the money. They've not received love. So money, the giving of money is not the real expression of love. There is a command of responsibility that your name carries over her life. There is a command of responsibility that your presence brings in her life. That she knows it in her heart. My husband is there for me. She knows it. No doubt. Now that wife is entering into that place of self-love. Where she realizes the same thing with children. They know. They just know. So you find the child like, eh, wait, what? Is it? No, don't worry. My dad is going to, my dad is going to come. My dad is going to do it for me. My dad is going to do this. My mom is going to do this for me. What are they saying? Those children have come to that place of self-love. Because they have, they have submitted themselves to the authority of love from their parents. So you see the way they lead their lives. They, there is a certain rest you find in them. You don't see them troubled. Children who lack that self-love, you will find, you see trouble in their eyes. And you will know something is not right. You will see how they, they, they fight over things. You will know something is wrong. So self-love, I, I want you to get this, is the realization that you are loved by a higher person. So in our case, as children of God, we are loved by God. Praise God. He loves us. He loves us. He, you know, you know <clears throat> if you are still in that place where you're wondering, will God come true for me? Then there's something with your love. There's something with your fruit. Remember, Jesus said, I appointed you to go and bear fruit. But now I'm telling you, before you begin to display the fruit, you must first of all let the fruit to abide in your heart. Because that's where it stands from. The Holy Spirit is in us. And what's he doing? He is sharing the love of God abroad in our hearts. So when we think of our Father, we think nothing but the love that he has for us. And you know, you don't try to start looking. He loves me. That's why he sent his son to that. No, no. Now that's true. But when we think, you get to that point where you just know, you just feel it inside you that God loves you. It doesn't mean troubles will not come around. It doesn't mean things will happen. But what guides your life is deep down in your heart. You've come to that place where you're like, my father will take care of it. I'm not afraid my father will take care of this thing. Oh, he will. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Mm. Thank you, Holy Spirit. John said, Behold, what manner of love the father has bestowed 
upon us that we should be called the children of God. He said the Father adopted us. He didn't call us servants. He didn't call, he says that we should be called his children. For a man to call you his son, it means hi Kalia. <laughs> he is making a statement that everything you see in me, you can see in him. We did not choose him. He chose us. And he ordained us to go bear fruit. Now the fruit we bear is the fruit of his kind. So now that's being a witness. We bear fruit just the same way he bears fruit. Understand me. We bring into this world ideas that show love. And we bring it from heaven. And we begin to manifest it in the earth. Wisdom, judgment. You get into a situation, by the time you begin to speak, you bring for the wisdom no one ever thought of. Why? Because he has sent you to go and bear fruit. When everybody's arguing, fighting, all we are saying, you don't join that. Rather, you sit back and like, how do I bring real change? How do I communicate? How, how do I bring the wisdom of God? And when you speak from that, because when they, all we are saying, now, now, they, they, most of those people don't have that self-love in the first place so they just say if we don't fight we will not get what we need but you my father will give me everything so because my father will give me everything i look at that situation i can be of help and so with that calmness of mind you are able to communicate truth and my time is up father i pray that your love indeed will be made manifest in our hearts like never before. In the name of the Lord Jesus. Amen. God bless you. I'll see you tomorrow.